So we now have vector subtraction. So when we subtract this location from this location, it'll give us this vector. We have perp counterclockwise. So I can take this thing and rotate it 90 degrees that direction. And then again, we have vector subtraction. So I can subtract the ship's position from the same origin vector as we did with this one. We're, we subtracted this vector from that to get that vector. And then we're going to subtract this point or vector from the ship position to get that vector. And then we can say, hey, what's the, what's the dot product between the two? That'll tell me the magnitude of each of them times the cosine of the angle. But I don't care about any of that. All I care about is the sine of the cosine of the angle. And if the sine is positive, I know that we are in this range, which is fine. Zero up to 90 degrees. We're fine in that case. But once we go negative, we know that the cosine of the angle is negative and we're, the ship's out here. That's a bad thing. Okay, and we need to do that with all the walls in the diagram. But I think just to get started, let's deal with this one wall and, and just prove that this actually works and I haven't just wasted your time and also mine. So, so remember we have the boundary verts control home to go to the top of the page boundary verts and sure enough the first one is the top one and then, then this is the left one so we'll just hard code it for those two just to make sure our logic works correctly and then we'll write a little loop to handle the rest of them so const vector 3d vector 3d reference first gets boundary verts sub zero and const vector Come on, tell you sense vector 3D reference second gets boundary verts verts sub one, and then I'm gonna say uh, hmm, let's let's do the wall now. We're gonna say vector 3D wall gets the second vector minus the first one, and then what we need to do that's 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 our wall vector, roughly this direction again. We need to perp CW that, and it'll give us this vector. So let's do that. I'm going to say vector 3D. I'm going to say normal. I'll tell you what that means in a minute. And that'll be wall dot perp counterclockwise in the XY plane, like so. Now, why did I call this normal? Normal in linear algebra land we get used to the term normal normal means perpendicular okay if i if i take the arrowhead off of our wall here well this vector and let me actually move that vector i'll just move it right here in the middle somewhere but this vector is perpendicular to our wall it's our normal okay i'll even erase the old one here erase 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 so this is a wall normal now generally normal vectors are normalized. Holy smokes, there's two terms that sound very similar. On, oh, what a headache. Don't stress it. We'll deal with that later. We'll learn about that later. We'll play with that later. We'll experiment with it later. But generally, these vectors have a length of 1. And this one does not have a length of 1. It has the same length as the wall we created it from. But I don't care about that. It's just, it's normal to the wall. It's perpendicular to the wall. So I'm going to call it normal. All right now, all we have to do, now let me move it back. I'm going to move it back. Let me put it back to its original location. Remember that we're using this as our origin for both that vector and our ship position. Now we need our ship position vector. So, so let's say vector 3D ship. How about respective? Respective ship position gets our ship position minus the, what are we minus? Minus, we subtracted the first, so we'll subtract the first. So if our ship is right here, here's our ship position, then, and this is first, okay, I'll put an F here for first. We subtracted that from our ship position, that gives us this vector. And now all I need is that A, magnitude A, magnitude B, cosine theta, I just want the sine of that thing. So it's real simple, I'm going to say float. Uh, dot result gets the normal dot with the respective respective ship position. And I could have said ship respective ship. I could swap these if I want to. It doesn't 
matter. But I dot them. That's going to give me magnitude A, magnitude B, cosine of thing. I just want to know the sign of it. I just want to still know the sign of it. So did I bring Q debug in? I don't know if I've shown you Q debug yet or not. It's kind of like writing to the console or C out. Kind of a cheap, simple way of doing that. I'm going to, I'm just going to, hey, dump it out to the screen there. Let's build this, see if it builds. It does build. You can see here. Oh, look, look, look. We have numbers scrolling down the screen. Let me clear this off. Watch these numbers. I'm going to move the ship around. and what? Ha oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We're, now notice we're positive. We're positive. And, and we're looking at this wall here, this wall on the left. We're positive. We're positive. But as I get closer and closer to the wall, it's getting closer and closer to zero. Do you see that? We're getting closer to zero. Closer to zero. Ooh, I was almost zero. Ooh, I'm almost zero. I'm almost zero. Let's do it. Let's do it. Negative. Look at that. We're negative over here. And, and I don't care about the actual number. I just care about are we positive or are we negative. Let's go positive again. Let's go positive. Positive. Let's go negative. Oh, this is fun. We could do this all day long. This is I, this is why I like game programming and math. It's, you know, you can crank math all day long on paper, but boy, you do it in code, and it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I understand why we need that. I see the math come alive. That's cool. I can do cool things with it. It's not just something that my high school teacher tells me I need to know for whatever random reason. Because my high school teacher doesn't even know why he knows it. He's just teaching it to me. And, you know, I, I really like practitioners, like especially game practitioners, where it's like, yeah, we need this math, and we need it for for this situation and that situation, yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's let's do all of the walls. We better fix this and do all of the walls, not just the first two. So let's wrap this in a loop. Four. Uh, let's see, unsigned. Did I do a uint? Yeah, we did a uint, didn't we? Uint, I get zero. I, let's see, we're... We we have we have four oops, let's go to the top here. We have four vertices, so we need to do this wall, we need to do this wall, we need to do this wall, that's three walls, and then we need to do that wall. Okay, remember we connected this last vertice with that. So we need to test all four of those walls. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna have to write a loop though, an interesting loop to do it. I I less than, what do we call it, num, I think we call it num boundary verts, very good, I plus plus, like so, let's put all these in curlies, control KF, highlight all that, and control KF, so first is going to be I, and the next one's going to be I plus one, but then I'm going to use the modulo, modulus operator, so on that very last vert, it'll wrap back down to zero, so we're going to mod that by this. So let's say I is is three. We're 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 zero based, right? We have vertices zero one, zero one two, three. Well, if I is three, I want to connect three with zero. So three plus one is four, but the number boundary verts is four. So four mod four. Well, there's no remainder in that case. That'll give us a zero again and pop us back to the beginning. That's nice. We don't have to do that in this case because I is just going to walk to the end and be done. So that's why I'm doing that modulus right there. Okay, and then we do basically all the same math and we do the dot result. All right now I'm going to... That's going to be a lot of printing and I'm, it's going to show us all four walls at once. Let me, um, let me just show you. I, I don't necessarily want to see all four walls at once because that's hard for me to debug and yeah, I see there's four values somewhere in here. There's four separate values. and Oh, that's hard to debug. I, and I'm kind of, well, I am stupid. Well, no, I'm not stupid. I, my wife gets mad when I say that. But I'm, I'm not the fastest tool in the shed. So <clears throat> let me see if I can simplify this a little bit. Every time you're debugging something, the best you can do is simplify it. So bool, any collisions? Okay, we'll assume there aren't any. And then I'm going to say... Hmm. Uh, let's see. Any collisions? Uh, can I do this? I wonder if I can do this. Or equals uh, dot result less than zero. Okay. If the dot result, if the dot product of any of the walls is less than zero, we know we've broken out of one of the walls. And then we're going to assume that we don't have any collisions. But then, hey, if 
If we have a collision with one wall, then we'll OR that together with the Boolean. It's, it's the same as saying any collisions gets any collisions OR a dot result. And this is actually a bitwise one that I've done here. Let me, let me can I, I'll, I'll do, I'll do the regular Boolean one just, just not throw you off here. But any collisions gets any collisions OR uh, another, uh, this dot result. So there we go. Let's, and then here out here, I'm going to say Q debug uh, any collisions let's see if that works hopefully my logic's correct it's 256 a.m. it's been a late night okay getting a false 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 let's let's cut over one of these walls we should see a true 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 hey come back come back come back okay let's go to the top here let's let's see if this wall this is the wall that we had to wrap around for right true oh yep loving it Loving it. Loving it. Let's go over here. Let's go over. Oh, come on. Let me go through the wall. I'm through the wall. True. Come back, little ship. Okay, come back in. True. So there you go. There you go. We have done some collision detection. We haven't done any collision res resolution. Res result. We haven't resolved the collisions. We simply said, hey, is the dot product less than zero? If so, we have a collision. All right. And the next step is to say, okay, well, now that we have a collision, what do we do about it? We need to fix up our velocity, and we also need to give the ship back in a proper space. So we'll do that in the next videos.